Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the After Action Battle Talk. This is Solar Gray, your cinematic sorcerer, and I'm sitting here with my very good, very dear friend, Steve Caceres. How you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you? Ah, oh, man, I am... Uh, I've been fighting off something, so I've been, like, getting this whole thing in my throat well, every five seconds. now you tell me. Huh? You locked me in a room. <laughs> you locked me in a room. We, you know, we, we touch hands. I give you, we share food. And then you tell me you've been fighting off something. It's magic, dude. Don't worry it's, about it. it it's, oh, now you're calling me a muggle. Huh? Now you're calling me a muggle? No, I'm saying what I get is suffering paradox. I'm not contagious. It's oh, just a pain in the ass okay. to me. All right. But yeah, no, There's honestly. Like a bunch of 90 kids who are so happy right now. <laughs> hey, we did. Hey, we featured Mage the Ascension on an episode of Fluff Talk with really? Carl. Yeah. Huh. See, you're on the show and you don't even listen to the podcast. No. That hurts. No, no, no. <laughs> like, I guess I have to amend that now. All, so, right, all right. right. Yes, yes, you do. Yes. Especially since you are now <laughs> <coughs> an official Prime Decker. You're part of the crew. Yeah, you're I guess. Part I, of the crew. I, I, it's like, here's, here's your starter kit. Here you go. Let's, let's oh, get going. I haven't here's given you the starter kit you yet. Haven't? No, oh, you haven't? Okay, no. I have to work up to that. No, 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 no. I just have to put it all together because oh, it comes okay. with an email address and a Twitter and all that stuff oh. so that people can yell at you about what we say without knowing who your family is that's fantastic <laughs> wonderful okay yeah well you know it's one of those things since i'm not paying money i can at least help not to screw up people's reputation much appreciated you know and speak <laughs> well you know i would pay you money except i don't have enough subscribers so if you actually want to make sure that the people i have on this show come in and get paid why don't you give us a like a subscribe and a share if this is on youtube and if you hate it and want people to go straight to hell and not look back like it subscribe and share it and then if there's a big enough petition of people telling us that we're idiots from our subscribers, then we might actually make a change. But the only way to find that out is to like, subscribe, and share it. Also, check us out on the SoundCloud with all the other stuff doing the same at Back in the Deck at SoundCloud. At SoundCloud. Um, check out our Patreon at Patreon slash Back in the Deck. There's also the Back in the Deck Twitter and the Back in the Deck Instagrams if you want to say anything to me. And I promise you this. I'm more likely to know what you have to say to me if you record a video on the Instagrams or on the Deckers on the Book. That's right, the Deckers on the Book site on the Facebooks. So send us your comments, your compliments, your stuff saying, hey man, we think that you guys are amazing, except I would change one little thing. I know it's coming. I, 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 back away from your keyboard and do not at me, all right? No, none of that adding. I know you. I am you. I'm just you a little bit older. <laughs> all right. So with that, and how can they get a hold of you, Mr. Caceres, if they want to say, wow, that is a handsome man with a nice voice. Currently, I'm just trying to be incognito online. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I, I, I'm one of these uh, Gen Xers who not quite gotten to the times. So I am on Facebook. It's That's right. You're one of the guys at the bug, like Jordan, um, your girl, Jordan Moon. Uh, Jordan Kate, she's one of us too. Please don't use the term "my girl." Well, uh, my <laughs> wife will be hearing this and watching it, and watching this. So she is one of the women that are at is one of the comic uh, one of the uh, sketchy bugs over at the comic bug over. Really? Night. Yes. So she's she's actually part of this. See, I've always known your wife as an introvert that doesn't leave the house much, except for con except for cons and work. Yes, yes. She is, she is an introvert. She occasionally gets out of her shell, puts on a Baroness outfit, and walks around, or a Star Trek outfit. I'm going to and... say this. <laughs> you guys watching, this is for the people listening. I know you want me to put up pictures. No. And for those of you guys watching, no, I'm not putting up pictures of my <laughs> guest's wife because we're adult. All right, and adults don't do that. But if you clients. wanted to go to her webpage, which is Third <laughs> Night, Third <clears throat> Cobra Third Night Watch Baroness, that and then you can see pictures of her voluntarily. Okay, that, that, that's that's the site she controls. So it's on Facebook. It's the uh, Cobra Third Night Watch uh, or Lady Nightshade on Instagram. Okay, all right, Lady Nightshade on the Instagrams. Yes. All right, so there we go, and you'll be able to see our good friend, Mr. Caceres, also in a lot of those pictures. It's either Captain America or Cobra Commander. No, no? but okay. No, oh, okay. no. All right, no, all right. No one wants to see me in a costume or pictures. So. <laughs> oh, come yeah, on. Yes, yes. All right, well, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Um, so, yeah, so what has your week been up to? Like, you know, it's it's been a little bit. Like, 
Um, it's been last night was great. Last night was great. I was with, again uh, Wednesday night is Creator Night at the Comic Bug, so I go there and hang out with other creators in the in, in the industry, people trying to get in who are currently in, um, who are <clears throat> you know artists, uh, writers, people who are trying to get into the industry, people who are currently in the industry, um, just sharing ideas, collaborating, uh, basically doing the work it needs to get inside the industry, especially the comic book industry. Uh, one of the things that people don't tell you now about the comic industry is that in order to get in is you already have to be self-published. Yep. That's the new thing. That is the, the forget portfolios, forget, you know, walking in at a convention. I mean, they will still do that, but honestly, you kind of have to have work in the can already up in you know, all the different internet sites and, and uh, social media sites in order to get any, anywhere or any kind of cred. That's, so, that's, that's the same way it works in the movie industry now. Yeah. Um, you got to make an independent movie, mm-hmm. but um, I would be pissed off about that. Except it's so easy now. Yes, you know it is so easy <laughs> to well, all you it's all you now. millennials and your all your technology now. It's so much easier. You have no idea how hard it was in the '90s with analog technology. Oh, how expensive seriously. it was. And seriously, it's, it's a, we live in a golden age. Yeah, we, we live well, in a golden age. a golden age for creativity. Yes. Okay, we don't have we do not live in a golden age for content. Oh my God. No. Well, no. Actually, no. I kind of disagree with that. Really? I disagree with that. I, I, okay. Um, for example, on Sunday nights, um, you're going to hear Game of Thrones, you know, The Walking Dead, all that kind of good stuff. You know what was the best thing to watch on a Sunday night when I was a kid? Married with children. No. no, no I was like, when I was a kid, not mm-hmm. when you were a kid. When I was a kid, it was... Hey, fuck off. It was, you're not it, that it much older. It, it was Voyagers, which okay. was okay. was okay. Okay. But, but freaking Dallas. Dallas was the high point of drama and... And and writing in the in the early '80s, All that right. was the best thing. Now we've got Game of Thrones. Well, we've hang got on, Polar hang on, hang on a minute. Okay, because yes. yeah, you're right about Voyagers and Dallas like and Voyager. Yeah. No one will talk crap on that no, show in this no, studio. No, no. All right, you apologize. Because right. Voyagers you're, you're right. was I, awesome. I, I take back Voyagers. All right, wasn't but, high quality, but, but it could be. It, I think it, it needs a reboot. It was, it was, it was the, it was, it was the one thing that made the '80s somewhat livable. But we also had V. Which was awesome. It was awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, the science fiction stuff was cool. It was just, I mean, when we think about, we look at like a Game of Thrones. We look at um, uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. We're this look, is the internet. Yeah, That's the internet. all we're talking about. But also, um, Battlestar Galactica. I will take okay. the modern version of Battlestar Galactica over the old one. Yes, that's where it started, but you cannot compare it on quality as. I mean, just you just acting, well, just strip away all the technology. Acting and, and the production acting and value is amazing. Well, the acting and production yeah. value of the new one, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm literally torn between Battlestar 2003 and Battlestar 85. That's your nostalgia talking. No, it's not. That's, that's I actually really? sat down and I watched, and <laughs> my problem, my my problem with with Battlestar 21st Century mm-hmm. was way too much sex. Way, really? way too really? much sex. Yeah. I really? mean, don't get me wrong. Sex is one of my three most favorite things in the world to do. Talk about wish it came in cans. I'd be recycling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But at the same time, I do have to say that, um, hey, let me uh, turn okay. The amount of sex that was in that show made me uncomfortable. And I used to edit porn. I mean, like, like, like seriously, because I was always asking myself the question, how is this relevant to the narrative that's being told at this moment? I, okay. I could definitely see that critique. I can yeah. definitely see but I, Again, I, I, maybe I have a higher threshold for sexual content. That's a possibility. I don't know. I mean, I remember watching Rome and I had a lot of sex. Lots of, and, okay. Yeah. And, but at the same time I'm thinking, well, you're in Rome. Yeah. There's not a lot of fucking shit and to do. And when in Rome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cater liked to be choked out. I mean, he was a Roman <laughs> senator. He was in charge. He was playing He was playing the empire. And, and someone hit me. Someone spanked me. Someone choked me out. It's true. So, and they didn't cover my boy Caligula. So, no. Well, uh, you know, they, they only had two seasons. They, yeah, they, they had one story to tell. And that was and obviously. It was, and it was a good story. Yes. I, I got to say it was a good story. Yes. Um, and but you know I'm, I am kind of there with you. We've got more better television yes. these days, but um, motion pictures, eh, uh, I don't know. But you know what we actually, I believe, are in a real golden age with mm. RPGs. Um, the tabletop RPG market is amazing right now. Really? Well, when when we were kids, okay, we had second edition D and D. 
Yeah. That was it. Well, pretty much until 1980. There, there were other ones, but that was the big daddy. That yeah. was that was the big one. And exactly. And come 1980, um, we finally got Shadow Run and a little bit of Battle Tech. 86. Okay. Yeah. And then came 1991 when White Wolf hit the scene. Yes. And that was that was I guess you could say the spearhead of kicking the door open to a role playing game for everything. Um I would say no because um I wouldn't say uh, White Wolf was the, was the leading the charge as, as far as a dark fantasy being its own some genre. Yeah. Um I remember as a kid going to the local bookstore. I mean, early 80s it was TSR and that was it. It was yep. D&D. Maybe Elderac. Maybe Elderac or yeah, Paizo. Um but then also you had as a um was it Strange Frontiers? Um, it was a science fiction one that TSR did in the early '80s. Uh, that was Star Jammer. Not, not, not no, that was Spell Jammer. Oh, um, yeah. But um, there was another science fiction one. But it wasn't until I got into high school and got a bike and then could ride out from my <laughs> town that I went to bookstores where I saw things like GURPS. Okay, or and Palladium, Call of Cthulhu. And Call of Cthulhu, and, and then and then maybe a few years later, riffs. they started appearing in my bookstore. In, in my bookstore, so that was my first experience. Like, there's an other role-playing systems there's other content than just fantasy that's true that was the early for me that was the late 80s that was me yeah the late 80s early 90s 90s. that was when everything came out exactly um and really had a forefront thing yeah and this is before the internet so for you guys out there oh my god torg yeah we're torg if you can find it it is a great idea, poorly executed, but oh my god, the ideas are amazing. We're yeah. doing a fluff talk on Torg, if we haven't already. Oh, okay, um, no, okay. Well, yeah. yeah, honestly, yeah, if you want to be in on that, that's yes. that would be great. Yes. That'd be I, fantastic. I'm still collecting that Because I'm so looking forward to seeing the writer, the Viking, and the wizard in one room yeah. talking about a game. That was like that was like the pinnacle thing you could do in TSR when you were a kid. It's like, how do we get Star Wars? How do we get Voltron in our campaign? <laughs> how do we do this? Yeah, so. and, there, and then came Torg. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and and with that, like with all the options, with all the yeah. different mechanics, like D twenty, D six, Warhammers, um, one six sided die for everything that's on for each thing yeah. that's on the table, um, the bidding systems, yeah, the card systems, exactly. Yes. Oh God, Deadlands. Let's let's mm. oh the card systems. <laughs> if if you're a dealer in Vegas or Reno, mm-hmm. or you know card tricks, then. Yeah, that's that's all you. That that's yeah. uh that game. But um but yeah, I'm noticing that um thanks to the popularity. Um cuz honestly back in the 80s, mm-hmm. I can only think of two. One two pieces of popular media that showed role-playing games um okay. in the 80s. One was good but passing and the other was terrible. And I I speak of course of the opening scene in ET where they're oh playing D and D, and that was good but passable because yeah. I just talked about ET and you just remembered that. Yeah. Um, but that actually relates to the the actual related topic, um, and of course, mazes and monsters, yes, Tom starring Hanks. Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks. <laughs> uh, oh. and the three other actors no one can think of. <laughs> yeah, who carried most of that most of that film? Yeah, yeah, you know, and we love Tom, but everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I still have bosom buddies. Just know that. Um, but now, with um, with the pervasion of popular culture on the internet, mm-hmm. and the fact that we have so many devices, because let's face it, back in our day, there was television, and there was the movie theater, and that was it. That that was it. TV and the movie theater. Yeah. That was all. Yes. Then they invented those VCR things. Yeah. And that gave us another option for seeing something later if we missed it in the theater instead of waiting for reruns where they took out all the violence and took out all the profanity. Or, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or you, you could know waiting for the Sunday ma- Sunday or Saturday matinee on ABC because they, oh, they, they didn't have anything else to the show The Family you. Film Festival, family yep. Film Festival where you actually got a lot of the 50s and 60s science fiction and fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Um, but now... you. Um, the ways that you can consume media, you've got your television because network TV is never going anywhere. It's never going anywhere, regardless of what it's everything dying. wants to do. It's but it's dying. you've got it's dying. Trust me, it's dying. Tell that to ABC. Tell that to NBC. Tell that to Stephen Colbert. 
CBS is TV for old people. <laughs> and old people will always want something to watch, he says as he gets older. Yes. <laughs> not on CBS. <laughs> it's true. It's true. We've got HBO. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because, you know, the full frontal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But beyond that, mm-hmm. it's like you've got your TV, you've got your streaming services, which are available mm-hmm. through your television, your Roku stick, your computer, your tablet, your mm-hmm. phone, and your watch. Yeah. Hell, um, right now, we don't have Google Glasses because they were ugly. But as soon as they mm-hmm. look like a pair of Ray-Bans, we're going to have it there, too. Yeah. You know? Or on our walls. Yeah. Our a little video wall. Um, that's that's happening. I, I think to Futurama, and there might be the EYE phone. You know, just yeah. shove the damn thing in your ocular socket. I, have that. <laughs> give, I do. Give me the transhumanism right now. Just give it to me. See, I, I'm I'm <laughs> I want to be a fan. Uh-huh. I really do, yeah. but um, I don't trust the people that program the chips. Got it. And that is again, a legit fear. I'm I'm always there because. I'm not going to say I'm an anti-vaxxer or a truther, but what I am going to say is this. There was a time where vaccines did an amazing job. But since then, people who make medicines have proven that they will participate in fuckery for money. Absolutely. (coughs) So are they still following the contract of public trust they had under Eisenhower? I don't know. I would say no. You know, so... Yeah, so I mean... You know, do I say that vaccines cause autism and all that stuff? No. But at the same time, um, I don't do the research. Since I grew up and my mom worked for a hospital, Uh um, I've seen doctors care. I've seen them not care. I understand that people are people. What I do know is that not too long ago, I think it was yesterday... Wait, wait. So is this a gaming podcast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, okay, we're getting right, there. We're right, getting right. there. Uh, again, this is the first segment. This is okay, where we talk right, about right. just... This is just uh, us being random. Okay. Yeah, this is us right. just being us, you know. Um, yeah. Just... I, I'm okay. Just... Uh, um, go ahead. Geez, this right. is a gaming guy. No, 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 no. Right. This is to my new campaign. Ah, uh, oh, okay. oh. Okay. Yeah, my, right. my new Illuminati Buster oh, campaign okay. for D20 Modern. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so just a couple of days ago, I saw that measles are on the uprise again. Yeah. So it's like anti-vaccine, measles on the uprise. I'm not saying that correlation equals causation, but before the anti-vaxxers, measles wasn't a thing. Now, it's a thing. Yeah. You know, but there have been different research things that have come out, like about our food. Like, you know, there's we're, we're eating too much corn in the United States. And yeah. it's causing a whole lot of problems. Yeah. Um, Eating too many carbs in general. Yeah. So sugar, sugar and corn is cheap. Yeah, really cheap and cheap. really easy to grow. And too cheap. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, I'm not on anybody's side. I just understand how people would come to those conclusions. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So, so that that's just where I'm sitting, mm-hmm. and I have to have that perspective because I'm a GM. Yes. So when I write NPCs <laughs> that are tinfoil hat dudes, yeah. I want them to be compelling. I want them to be like, well, I can see where you go. That yeah, yeah, logical results absolutely. from insane beginnings, absolutely, and insane results from some logical beginnings. Yep. It all comes down to narrative, and you know that as a writer. My favorite aspect of the gaming world was White Wolf's uh, Hunter, where they took serial killers and made them <laughs> and gave them context. Yes, that was <laughs> frightening, but very enlightening at the same time. Maybe we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, um, that, that's another episode. Yeah. Um, but since there is so many um, game, or since there are, since there are so many gaming things out there, there's a lot of resources that people can pull from, yes. and a lot of different genres. Yes. Like you can actually make up your own role playing game. Mm-hmm. You can base you can base any of your fluff on any existing system, yeah. and they don't have to be systems where you need an advanced degree in rocket science. Yes, I have one, but you don't need an advanced degree in rocket science just to understand the game. Yeah. So that is where we are today. Um, any any thoughts on that? I would absolutely agree with you that tabletop gaming is at a... It, I, for a while, I was kind of scared back about 17 years ago when Hasbro was buying everybody. Ooh, yeah. Everybody was going under. When and, Wizards of the Coast once existed. Yes, and we're buying everything, but we seem to come through that little, I guess, bottleneck, and there is so much more content now available online, um, different kind of gaming systems. Um, yes. And yeah. if you ever 
want to just blow an entire paycheck not at a casino, mm. look up role pl- or tabletop role well, playing you games. You can blow the paycheck um, once. Yeah, just, just and then you're done for the rest of the year. You yeah. never go to the casino again. Yeah, well, yeah, it's true. But <laughs> yeah. I, I'm saying if you want to blow it on something yeah. like that, I dare you to look up role, tabletop role playing game mm-hmm. on Kickstarter. And you oh, will see, yeah. Geez, that's right. I see, I that. was going somewhere with that. Yeah, okay. I mean, that was, uh, this see, is yeah. why you're the host. Yeah, this is this... why I just show up and <laughs> blather on, and this is why you kind of guide things. So. Yeah, just, you know, don't start going, yes, yeah, what now? Hi, oh. No, I'm just, not I, doing catchphrases. Thank you. I'm not doing that. You do that, I'm, I'm going to have to not ever have you back again. See? You know. I know my survival instinct. Awesome blossom. I know here. Actually, I'm turning out to have a catchphrase, and it's kind of dumb. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, that's where we're at. So with all of the new and independent games and stuff like that, believe it or not, there are a bunch of people that are using role-playing games or using those theories to actually pass a lot of the time that they got. And those people are people that don't just have time, but they're doing time. Ah. Nice segue. I like that. <laughs> hey. Nice. Hey, you're the writer. You're I'm the performer. You're so professional. <laughs> so I'm working on being professional. Okay. Okay. But yeah, that was my segue. I can't afford the one with two wheels that you can't knock over. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, according to some of the research I've done, um, an article from Vice actually showed that Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games in general, in general, are um, being used by prisoners as forms of rehabilitation, like inside the prison. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I gotta say, like, if I was in prison, I'd be pretending to be somebody else too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you got a lot of time. That's see, this. This is the weird thing. For, for those of us who enjoy role playing, we look for the days we we can do actually do role playing, and everything else that we do, the sleeping, the working, the wife's. All of that is a distraction for us to get to those few hours we can role play. I'm, uh, I'm kind of okay. jealous. I'm kind of girl- jealous that these guys <laughs> have all the time in the world to role play. You yeah. know? Okay, my girlfriend is not <laughs> a price I have to pay. That's true. For, I mean, yeah. Robin, you know, I, I, Robin, love, Robin. I love my hobbit. Yeah. I do. My, Robin, my hobbit I is not, not a price. at all. You know, but yeah, sometimes I'm, I'm I just so wish she'd trouble, shut man. her mouth so I can roll some dice. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. so in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember- I said for most gamers, not me. So. Are you a rotten liar? Yeah, all <laughs> You've seen my wife. Yes, and I also know that your wife has her own games. Yes, so, sort of. So you might be the price for her. Like, you might be the distraction from her having uh, that's fun. That's very true. That is very true. Yeah, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quick, yes. claim it. That's how you clean it up. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, so the, uh, using role-playing in to, for basically for rehabilitation. Yeah. So that's kind of weird because, you know, most jail systems in the country don't even have rehabilitation. <laughs> it's not even their focus. I didn't say that this was happening in L.A. County Jail, but uh, uh, yeah. but that, that that's all in time, you know. And y'all know who I'm talking about. I love you guys, all right? I got cousins that are doing time, too. So there, there we go. Um, but, yeah, like being – I explain to people a lot, and you, you brought it up a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, being a person of color – Mm-hmm. from an urban environment i didn't have access to a lot of the role-playing stuff oh, because geez. there are no role-playing game stores in south central oh. inglewood watts or compton in 19 in 2017 there still aren't that, that's, that's true that <laughs> you know is very, there aren't yeah. there never have been and no i couldn't get the loan that's why i didn't do it myself but um, I had to hop on the bus and go as far as Hollywood or Burbank. You know, my first comic store was Golden Apple on Melrose, and my first game store was The Last um, Grenadier in Burbank. Just so that show, was a three-hour bus ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to live my little like, weight privilege there. For me, <laughs> the idea of the ga- of the geek culture taking over everything, and I can just walk anywhere, and I, I'm going to hit a comic book store, a role-playing store. Or be around someone who's playing Pokemon Go. Oh, I didn't even. You occur mean to Pokemon? Me. No. No, Pokemon No. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, I 
work I go through South Central every single day, it didn't even occur to me that there wasn't that contact to this day. Yeah. It didn't even occur to me that these people are being underserved. And there's a lot of places in the country that are like that. Not just urban, but rural as well. Yeah. But like, I'm sure in Cabrini Green in Chicago, there's not a role playing store. If there is, hit us up. I would love to give you some time. Um, I'm sure, say, in certain parts of Harlem or certain part of Brooklyn. And let's face it, 1984 in the Boogie Down Bronx, mm. I'm pretty sure there was no role-playing game store. Sure. You know, um, Libraries might have carried some of the stuff, but without context or a guide to realize that this is a game, yeah. it, it's still very closed off. So, kudos to the really brave nerds who got arrested and decided to start teaching other inmates how yeah. to do this, because what the articles that I looked up um, didn't show us how it got started. Like, no one really knows how it got started wow. in the joint. Now, I know from being an adult and having as many friends that the two major places that role-playing games really, really came to fruition were colleges, where not everybody could afford to go in the yeah. 80s, and the military. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know a lot of military geeks. Yeah, so it would, it would yeah. stand to reason that you would use RPGs in prison because got nothing but time. Yeah. Nothing but time. Yeah. Um, but I'm fascinated by the idea, considering when it comes to rehabilitation, actually, part of rehabilitation is understanding how what you did was unacceptable. Mm -hmm. If you actually did something, but that's a different thing. I don't want to talk about the railroading of people of color into the prison system. Yeah. Not that podcast. That's for the meeting down at the docks. You can find. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that's a whole different. That's a different yeah, meeting. That's a different thing. Um, but once you're in, you know, it, it's this idea of whenever you go into the prison system, you're already playing a role, you know, because it's segregated by race, it's segregated by religion, it's segregated by offenses. It's almost like a hyper-reality. It, it kind of is. I mean, because, you know, like when I come home, I'm just Steve to my wife. I'm not all the other things people see I'm walking down the street. Exactly. When you're in jail, not only are you black, but you're black exactly and, and if i run in yes. with the if i run in with the gorillas i'm gonna need some kind of protection from somewhere yes you know but um a lot of the things that the role-playing circles have been in it has been cross-cultural really <clears throat> yeah. really gamers are gamers if you if you check out the article that, no, that makes sense yeah gamers are gamers and um we got um People from the Latino section and the black section and the white section all sitting up playing D&D, going through these campaigns and these adventures, you know, in the prison system. Which and yeah, almost kind of reflects what actually happens in the game when these random people from different cultures who are these archetypes suddenly coming together in this hyper reality. I did not. I, I didn't get. I didn't think that about that. Is it's almost like they're. It's kind of meta. Yeah, it's, it is ridiculously <laughs> meta. Where you have because most role playing is are these cultural archetypes. I want to play a samurai. I want to play a knight. I want to play you know a, a wizard who is very Merlin esque. And so then you, I've got a plus nine against ogres. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then you have these guys who are basically stereotyped. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, you're a Pachuco, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're a gang member, you're, you're a white nationalist. Yeah, you're a Vato, you're, you're a, a Pecker All these different things. Yeah. And then you, you, so you take on that role all your, in, in a very negative way. Well, you have to in order not to get knifed in your sleep. Exactly. So you then, then, then you get these guys who are then given a game where they're then allowed to play something different. Still an archetype. Mm -hmm. Still. But it's an archetype of their choice. Yes. That's the thing. That, they're, that, they're given yeah. back their agency. Yeah. And holding on to something like that over the course of a five, you know, four or five year sentence, that's one of the things that has allowed a lot of these prisoners to hold on to their humanity. Yes. You know? I, I think I think we're going to have a lot of people who are contrarian say, well, that's ridiculous. What, what, what is a role playing game going to teach somebody about, you know, being a different person? And it's like it's, it's an art form. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's oral storytelling. And the art is very, very healing. It doesn't matter if it's writing, dance, acting, whatever it is, it allows a person to get some of that energy that's in, that's bouncing around their head that's very negative and get it out in a positive way, or at least in a non-offensive way. Ah, see, that's what we're talking about right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a non-offensive, non-dangerous, non-offensive. Non 
physically violent um, road to catharsis. It has that that possibility. Yes. Um, again, um, I was I was taken aback by the idea and that how it never occurred to me because. I've been in so much therapy for so many decades mm -hmm. and role playing as part of therapy has been one of the most useful tools within that field. Yeah. You Anybody know? who has had a basic interpersonal class in high, you know, your peer counseling in high school, you know, you had that. Yes. Privilege is shown again. <laughs> well, I went to, yeah, I went to private school. Yeah. That was a senior elective interpersonal, you know, peer counseling, because that's, you know, when you're a teenager, uh, you don't listen to adults, you listen to your peers. That was <laughs> the true. whole point of it. Um, you have peer counseling in, in high school. You have interpersonal communication 101. It's an entry-level course in college if you have access to college. These are very basic courses, and they all teach role-playing, all of them, at every mm. single point. Absolutely. That is, it's the idea of, uh, it, basically when you're, when you're doing role-playing, you're teaching a person to be empathetic. You're trying to teach a person, can I walk in this, oh, can I try, make an attempt to see and feel what this other person's feeling? And that's a very primary skill that you need if you want to resolve conflict, if you want to resolve your anger issues. All, you mean if you want to interact with anyone else?